Hi guys, welcome back to uh, my second video of today. This will be two of three, actually, that I need to share and get out today. Uh, this was a dream that I received on August, uh, the, the morning of August the 12th, the night of August the 11th, uh, that I would like to share with you. Uh, in my dream, um, I saw a girl trying to show her former employer, uh, was the impression that I got, it was her former employer, uh, that she was able to refinish and refurbish, um, refine in a way, a dining table. And her former employer appeared to be, um, I got the sense that he was an evil man, um, but she was trying to, um, to show him that she was able to do the job. Um, it was like a telephone call had been made from her to her former employer, um, and, and somehow I was able to listen in to the conversation uh, in the spirit. Um, and I could hear um, the call she was making to him, trying to explain um, what she was able to do. Um, trying to put it forth that she was able to do these things. Um, but the employer was just not hearing it. He was just not accepting of it. Um, and I could see uh, in the spirit the table that she did complete. Um, it was beautiful. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a pale golden yellow color. Um, it was just a beautiful table. Uh, and chairs went with it, I saw, but um, my focus was on the table. And um, as I had seen that in the spirit, I was watching um, the uh, former employer, um, uh, you know, kind of balking and shaking his head and, and basically not wanting to listen to anything she had to say. Um, when someone walked behind me, um, someone had passed me by that had walked behind me. Um, I didn't know who this person was, was, but they came right back to me. And they said to me, uh, it was a woman, uh, and she had blonde hair. And she said to me, uh, I have been looking for you. And um, meaning she was talking with me. Uh, I didn't know who she was. I don't think I've ever seen her before. Um, and I, in the spirit, I was not sensing who she was. Um, but she said, uh, I have been looking for you. Um, she said, I have closed 700 houses in 40 days. Um, so I understood that maybe she might have been a real estate agent or something of that sort. But she said, I have closed 700 houses in 40 days. And as she was saying the 40 days, she was down uh, on the ground in the dirt. And she was, I, I don't know if she was trying to add things together so that she could identify the amount of days or, or what. But when I looked down into the dirt to see what she was drawing, the number 10 was down there. The number 10 was was down uh, on the dirt um, and she she arose back up and she said the next several houses that I sell are yours uh, they're yours to have meaning the money that she would or the profits that she would have received from the houses um, she was going to be given uh, given to me um, and um, I, I don't know why I, I didn't know her um, but she was granting me um, favor. She was granting me some type of, uh, of a blessing. And um, she said that she was headed into a meeting and that we would uh, talk about this later. And, um, and that was the end of the dream. Now guys, um, I, I don't have to probably explain a whole lot to tell you that um, the first thing that popped into my mind was um, Psalm 23. Um, when I woke in the middle of the night and just started thinking upon this dream, Psalm 23 uh, came to mind. And it was, you know, about the Lord setting a table uh, for me before my enemies. Um, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And the girl had, um, she had refinished and refurbished uh, this table. Um, I'm going to try my very best to go through and show you some of the things that the Lord has um, shown me 
in regards to this dream um, so that we can get some understanding on it. I do not have an interpretation uh, for this particular dream, uh, so I'm just going to provide some information that I have found. Um, so let's just take a look at Psalm 23 um, uh, itself, the whole psalm, and um, just read. Most people know this psalm, um, but let's just take a look at it. We'll read it from uh, the, the Amplified. So the Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. And he makes me lie down in fresh and tender green pastures. And he leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. And he leads me in the path of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him, not for my earning of it, but for his name's sake. And yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the deep and the sunless valley, the shadow of death, I will not fear or dread any evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runs over. Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days of the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. Um, so I thought that was interesting because what came to me was you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, um, the color was that yellow gold color. Uh, and what I found here is that gold is the color associated with kings and kingdoms. Um, it's a color of metal and as both a color, a color and metal, right? It is associated with kings and things pertaining to kings and kingdoms. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. Often gold points us to King Jesus and to his bride, the church. Um, so when I went down through into this, and you guys can read this whole thing, I clicked on Table of a King because that was what my dream was, right? So I pulled it up, and it says the King's Table. There is a strong correlation between the color or metal, gold, and the subject of kings. Where we find the color or metal, gold, we should be looking for something pertaining to the king. Um, so in the tabernacle in the wilderness that God instructed Moses and the children of Israel to build, there were several pieces of furniture that had gold as either part of the piece or all of the piece. Um, and it was talking about some of the things. So the table in the tabernacle points us to King Jesus' table. This table was called a pure table. Moreover, this table had showbread placed upon it that Aaron and his un, and his sons ate thereof in the holy place. So it's talking, it's pointing us to the table, the king's table, uh, which I thought was very interesting. So now she said something in the dream that made uh, that that made. Um, made me wonder what the meaning of the numbers were. The first thing that she said was um, she had 700 houses in 40 days. She had closed 700 houses in 40 days. Um, I didn't know what 700 meant. Um, so I came to this uh, site and I looked to see what seven meant. Um, and basically, seven is the number of completeness and perfection. And so I said, all right, well, let's see what 70 means then. Uh, because it doesn't have a number 700 for me to look at. And 70 just means that it's two perfect numbers. Seven meaning perfection, which is what we read. And 10 representing completeness and God's law. So, um, so then I thought, well... 700 would be 70 and 10, uh, which basically is this same is this is the same 
uh, definition uh, because this is 70 and it's telling us what 10 is here and so um, and so I said okay so it's perfection and completeness and God's law and uh, and I said okay um, and so then the other thing that she said was in 40 days and then I saw um, I saw her drawing the number 10 on the dirt um, I saw her drawing the number 10 on the dirt and so and so we still again are seeing this but there's something that I want you to um, to take a look at when I received the dream uh, I received the dream the night of the 11th into the 12th that's when I first received the dream and um, and I thought well I need to go and take a look at what's what's going on on first Elul and so when I pulled up first Elul, I think I have this one marked. Yeah. When I pulled up first Elul, it tells us that on that day, Moses ascended Sinai for the third 40 day stretch. So on the early morning of first Elul, Moses ascended Mount Sinai, taking with him the stone tablets he had honed, had honed by divine command. Moses remained on the mountain for 40 days until the 10th of Tishri. Now look at this, guys. Until the 10th of Tishri. Moses remained on the mountain for 40 days until the 10th of Tishri. Now, as soon as I read that, I said, Lord, you're pointing me to this. You, you are pointing me to this. So 40 days... Um, from the day that I received this dream is the 10th of Tishri. And so when I went to go take a look to see what the 10th of Tishri was, the 10th of Tishri is Yom Kippur. Now, guys, I don't need to tell you that I was pretty excited to see that. Uh, let me finish going through what all happens in Elul. Um, and then I want to come and talk to you about Yom Kippur. So he, he remained on the mountain for 40 days until the 10th of Tishri, uh, during which time he obtained God's wholehearted forgiveness and reconciliation with the people of Israel following their pre betrayal of the covenant between them and their worship of the golden calf. This was the third of Moses' three 40-day periods on Mount Sinai in connection with the giving of the Torah. Uh, ever since the month of Elul, which is um, the month of Elul, which starts um, the day I had that dream, it starts here in August and runs through September, ever since then the month of Elul serves as the month of divine mercy and forgiveness. Okay. So now we're looking here at what the observances are. Um, it's, it's traditionally a time of intro, introspection and stock taking, a time to review one's deeds and spiritual progress over the past year and to prepare for the upcoming days of all. Okay. The divine month, it is a, it is a month of divine mercy and forgiveness uh, to return to God prayer, charity. It is a time when the king is in the field and in contrast to when he is in the royal palace. So everyone who desires is permitted to meet him and receive, and he receives them with a cheerful countenance and shows his smiling face to them all. Uh, when I read that, I said, you have got to be kidding me. Um, he was just saying to press into him, to seek him, to press into him, uh, to, to, um, to, to get to know who he is. Uh, this is just amazing. Elul customs include the daily sounding of the shofar as a call to repentance. So it is a month of, rep of repentance. And then it also says here that they read the Psalms in the month of Elul, which I thought was real interesting because the several uh, videos back, that is the very thing that he said. We would find more information on reading the Psalms. 
Um, so guys, uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, there is a lot going on here. Let's take a look at uh, Yom Kippur. It is the holiest day of the year, the day at which we are closest to God and to the quintessential core of our own souls. It is the day of atonement. It is on this day he will forgive you to purify you that you be cleansed from all your sins before God. Um, this is the day when the high priests enter into the Holy of Holies. Um, guys, there's a lot of information here. I would like for you to go and read this on your own. I think you are going to be very, very excited um, to understand what I really felt like this dream was showing me. Um, in the dream, I felt like this was where the Lord was leading me. The 40 days and the 10 in the dirt and this 40 days is showing exactly um, the tenth of Tishri. Now, here's something even more that I would like to bring up um, because not too long back um, I said to you guys, guys, I think we're in the year of Jubilee. Um, and I also said, you know, I know the counting doesn't seem right. Something just is not right according to all the different years and everything that they have going on. But there's something going on here. Uh, and I said it in a video at that time. There's something I want you to listen to here uh, from this guy. It's just going to be for just a, about four or five minutes. Um, but he's got to, and it, it is kind of hard to hear. So just, um, However, you can hear him a little bit clearly. Uh, maybe you can go online and listen to him um, yourself. Maybe you can hear it a little clearly. There does seem to be some static in his video. But it's just going to be for uh, just a few minutes. I'd like for you to listen. Let me cut it up. Right? Because the middle of the Bible is one 
one seven of Psalm, right? In the middle of the Bible. Then uh, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts just happen to be 117 chapters. And then that's the end of the Gospel story. And um, then we read the Song of Songs, the Song of Songs, and uh, we realize it has 117 verses through eight chapters, okay? So then there it is again. And then just some numbering, and everything was lining up for this 117, right? So uh, then we started talking about the 120th Jubilee. Well, the 120th Jubilee would have started Yom Kippur. And so we would be in the 120th Jubilee if, they said, because I'm, I'm talking to some guys who are a lot more Jewish than I am. Um, they said, well, if everything should happen this way, then that means that Jubilee is linked to everything that you talk. So I said, okay, so I'm not crazy. But then that's what he said. No, you still might be. If nothing happens, you're still crazy. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, I can accept that. But it was just amazing to me how um, how God can escalate and show you more and more and more and then show you where you're wrong. And, but as long as you're obedient, he's going to lead and guide and follow you. Okay, so now... Once I did that, well, I said, well, let me go back and see about this side of card thing. Because I was reading, I was uh, reading, uh, I read the paper on, on, on the computer now. My wife got me to Okay, so I'm just going to stop it right there. And he's talking about the Scotty Clark thing. And most of you all have probably seen that video where um, uh, Scotty links that September 23rd sign um, and and identifies that um, in in uh, in Revelation with the woman with the 12 stars in her crown. And what he goes in to talk about in the rest of this video is that there is only two times in the last 2,000 years that 12 stars have actually been in her crown. Um, and the last one was the one that we just passed. And so, um, and so we are looking at that this is the year of Jubilee. But what I wanted to really point out here, um, uh, because we could be off by a year. Uh, we could be. I, I, I find it very, very hard to grasp if that is the case. But um, I'm thinking we are right on the verge of everything, including uh, all of the other messengers um, identifying basically, you know, this is it, this is it. Um, but what I really wanted to bring up to you was the fact that he was talking about the Jubilee and the Sabbath rest. Um, and so God's calendar talks about a Sabbath year and the Jubilee year and the pattern of the seventh day of rest in the week of the week of the weekly Sabbaths. And so um, it talks about um, in the seventh year that you're not to harvest your you're not to harvest your land and uh, and then it goes in and talks about the Jubilee year um, and thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee seven times seven years and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years then shall thou cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. Okay, so we just, the day of atonement we just saw was Yom Kippur, and that's what he was saying. And you shall hollow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither, neither reap uh, that which grows of itself, neither gather the grapes of it of thy, of thy vine undressed, for it is jubilee, and it shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of Jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Um, so you guys can go into Leviticus and read all of the detail of it and then break it out and amplify it and however you want to do it to see. Um, because, you know, when I, 
when I had was given that um, dream about my my mother and and then the prayer for her and that document and we saw the date on it um, when I had the dream last year I saw the date had I saw the date on it and the date was 813 um, you know I didn't know what in the world that was you know what 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 that was but the Lord had given me some information too um, about the Jubilee and that um, you know, this was this was the year of jubilee, and that um, you know things were going to be restored to us no matter how we lost them, uh, and it would also be people restored to us no matter how we lost them. And so, um, and so, if you'd like to go back and listen to that video, you can. Um, it's that's up to you, but it's uh, many of you have probably already seen it. Um, before so guys um, I wanted to bring this dream up to you um, I wanted to bring it to your attention um, her table is being um, set for us in the presence of our enemies um, you know that is that's big information uh, that's big stuff you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you know and so here's some commentaries on that it's a sudden transition from the figure of the flock to the banquet. It's a sudden transition from the figure of the flock and walking through the valley of the shadow of death, right? To all of a sudden being at a banquet. Um, it's a quick change in Psalm 23. Um, to prepare means to furnish, to spread, to offer a spread. Um, in the presence of, of mine enemies, we, we must imagine the banquet spread on some secure mountain height in sight of a baffled foe who look on in harmless spite. Uh, there isn't anything the enemy can do at that point. Uh, it's completely done. In the presence of mine enemy or adversaries, uh, the mark of favor is public and unmistakable. Okay, I need to say that again. The mark of favor is public and unmistakable. That woman was giving me something I did not earn. Uh, it was favor, and she was doing it right out in front of everybody. Um, so I needed, I just need to bring that to you. The figure is changed. Jehovah is now described as a host who bountifully entertains the psalmist at his table and provides him with a lodging in his own house as oriental monarchs entertain those to whom they wish to show special favor. They furnished me with plenty and variety of provisions and comforts. Um, who seeing, envying, and fretting over it are not able to hinder it. Oh, n the enemy is not going to be able to do anything about it. And God is just going to start blessing his children in public and in front of the enemy. And there's not a thing they're going to be able to do about it. Not one thing. Let's read this one in full. I double quoted this one because this one is actually my favorite. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Another transition. The danger of death is past. David reverts to the thought of the tranquil, the tranquil, happy, joyous time in which God has vouchsafed to grant him. He has adversaries, indeed, but they, but they are powerless to effect anything against, against him. They have to look on with ill-concealed annoyance at his prosperity, <laughs> to see his table amply spread, his condition such as men generally envy, his wealth typified by abundant oil, make us fat, um, his whole life full to overflowing with blessedness. My cup runneth over, he declares, is not only full to the brim, but runs over the brim. An expressive metaphor indicative of a state of bliss rarely experienced in this life. So guys, I share this dream with you. Um, you can take this to the Lord. Please take this to the Lord. Um, I don't have an interpretation on it, but I think... Um, I think with the things um, that the Lord led me in regards to what my study was, um, I think it paints us a very, a very good picture. Um, guys, there is, the Lord is with us always, 
and um, there's coming a time uh, when this is going to happen. You know, the Lord said to me, and I've shared this before, several years ago I had gotten off of work and I was driving down the parking deck um, and I popped in a CD in my, um, in my car radio and, um, and it, was a, it was a song uh, that was singing Psalm 23. And when it got to the part about um, preparing a table uh, before my enemies, the Lord asked me, he said, do you believe that, my child? That's what he asked me. In the middle of me praising, uh, that's what he asked me. And, uh, and I said, Lord, I believe anything you tell me. Now, at that time, I probably believed it, mm, I don't know, uh, a, small, a, a small bit. But in my mind, it, it was much larger at that time in regards to where my faith is. But my faith today has grown to such magnitude that I look at it now and I'm like, oh, yes, Lord, I know that you will provide. I know that you will provide. Um, I'm walking through something in my own life at this time, and I have... Uh, I have not allowed fear to enter in, not one iota, because I know the Lord is going to provide. And surely he's given me this dream to help confirm that. Guys, we are about to embark upon some pretty great times. Uh, enlarge your expectancy. There's great things coming to the body of Christ. I love you all. Until I talk to you again. Bye.